Hello students, uh, welcome to the PTR 3134 course. Uh, this is your course teacher, Muhammad Jujuli. Hope everyone is fine. Uh, today we'll start the module 2 of the course. And at the last lecture, we have learned on codes, specifications, standards, and the importance of <clears throat> Codes and specifications, and also a list of uh, different uh, organization that provide uh, codes and specs for different industries. For instance, uh, petroleum industries, um, and within the petroleum industries, we have um, codes and specs for the pipelines, for the different units, for utilities, and so on. So today, um, we'll learn on uh, at our uh, module the first thing we'll learn is the pipeline or the piping materials okay so let's commence <clears throat> so um in an overall uh, we can um, categorize the pipeline uh, materials of construction uh, by three different types one is ferrous metal uh, it's self-explanatory, that means it's made by iron. Uh, Non-ferrous metal, that means different types of metal without iron or any types of <clears throat> iron um, alloy with it. And non-metallic, for instance, PVC, thermoplastics, ABS, PEX, concrete, these. Now, within the ferrous metal, we have cast iron, ductile iron, carbon steel, and stainless steel. These are the four major category of the ferrous metal we got. And for the non-ferrous metal, we got copper, brass, titanium, and aluminium. Okay, And we have lots of other different um, <clears throat> metals we use uh, to uh, strengthen the type of the metal. Okay. For instance, in the stainless steel, we use chromium, a portion of chromium and nickel. Okay, so we'll actually come with that later. So, uh, let's uh, talk about the iron at first. Okay, uh, cast iron. Now, <coughs> cast iron is pretty rudimentary, as probably many of you know. Like, cast iron is just the base iron without having nothing it's it's the first uh, metal that used for piping like a uh, thousand years back with the um, uh, like uh, uh, during uh, during even the Roman period they used the cast iron with the uh, with the lead okay so they used that but <clears throat> it got really bad design also it is highly corrosive so uh, cast iron is not a good use. Um, Ask me B31.3 contains some basic uh, allowable stress data for a great cast iron pipe, but uh, it's not an ideal uh, pipeline to use. Um, it's because it's brittle in nature and definitely we can't use it for high pressure pipeline. Uh, now, uh, we still use cast iron pipe sometimes because it's cheap. Uh, primarily for the drainage and wastewater uh, for the vent types of use. Uh, now let's go with DI or ductile iron. Well, ductile iron is uh, stronger than cast iron for sure. Um, it's also usually used in uh, portable water services. So at the water service pipeline, those are the uh, Tactile iron, especially probably you have seen these types of uh, piping uh, works. So these pipe works are actually uh, the duct iron. Okay, now um, as maybe 16.42 got the duct iron <coughs> pipeline flanges and flange fittings. Uh, this is the standard we follow for the duct iron pipeline design. Uh, it can be coated with tar or asphalt to make it more uh, resistant to corrosion. Okay. Carbon steel. Carbon steel is the widely used. Okay, it is uh, most widely used in in uh, in 
pipelines, uh, namely like oil and gas, uh, chemicals. Uh, so it's a used versatile. Okay, so <coughs> carbon steel has a main allowing constituent is carbon that range from uh, 0.1 to 2 percent, uh, sometimes even 4 percent. Uh, carbon steel widely used as a line pipe and, and always remember the line pipe means the main pipeline for double and gas okay so sometimes we'll, I will just use line pipe so you would assume a line pipe means like the major oil and gas pipeline okay so it used as a line pipe in petroleum industries and also as a steam system okay we use uh, carbon steel for that now the grade of carbon steel uh, pipe depending on the metallurgy and manufacturing of the pipe so it have different types of grade I will actually explain a little bit more on the carbon steel pipe later on and some uh, carbon steel pipe could be example is the ASTM A53 grade probably you are already familiar with it and um, API 5LX42, which is very, very common for oil and gas uh, purpose. API 5L grade B ETC. Okay. Now, within the carbon steel, we have different types. It, the types actually um, uh, because of the manufacturing process. Okay. So, the various types of manufacturing process, we have different types of carbon steel pipeline. For instance, one is seamless pipeline. Now, what is seamless pipeline? Seamless pipeline is something that we don't have any joint or any seam throughout the pipeline. So, how do we actually make this pipeline? We have a, for instance, a big, uh, thick iron bar. We put a ram, we ram it, and we put make a hole when it is. Uh, when it is very very hot and malleable and that's how we actually make the seamless pipe that means there is no joint you see like i mean even there is no joint at all and sim uh, because it is homogeneous uh, substance with no weld stress like when you actually put the welding pipelines have some stress inside and that's a uh, and that kind of like stress is uh, another uh, big source for corrosion and failure of the pipeline okay remember that so the seamless pipeline do not have any well stress okay so the seamless pipe is the strongest in the variety okay so for example the maximum allowable stress are the higher for a uh, 53 type s and type s means seamless okay like grade b is different type but when you will see a 53 type s that means it's seamless so the seamless got the highest allowable stress and lower uh, <coughs> lower um, uh, coro uh, ill stress that means it got no ill stress uh, well stress sorry uh, well stress at all and uh, lower chance of attack by corrosion so it's it's the perfect variety but um, one of the problems the seamless we can't make it very big as you can see like the manufacturing process uh, for instance if we want to make a pipeline uh, like a four feet of diameter it's uh, it's very expensive to make the seamless pipeline so that's exactly why only for the smaller diameter we use seamless pipeline but for larger diameter we cannot make it because the manufacturing is heavily cost involved okay um, so for that purpose we actually use uh, different other types of welding process and these are the different pipelines with different types of welding process so let me show you actually how this thing is done um, uh, so here actually for instance you got the pipeline it's a sheet okay you we got the sheet it's a metal sheet then we actually uh, make it uh, bend it and then we put it in, I mean uh, make the pipeline and here actually as you can see here we weld okay we weld the pipeline through there so for instance uh, we just weld it through here 
uh, um, here okay so the welding is done in this area okay that's how we actually weld now this welding actually could be done in different um, uh, process like different way okay for instance here is the pipeline we got this welding in here okay so uh, uh, let me draw this welding so for instance this is the welding we do okay now what are the type of the welding we actually do so one of the type is ERW or electric resistance welding okay so it's very versatile uh, ERW pipe it used a uh, size 2 inch to 24 inch like that means like I mean two feet of uh, diameter of the pipeline we use we can use ERW uh, a high frequency welder it heat the steel to this very high temperature nearly like 2500 and to um, form a fusion well that means the pipe actually get melt fused and then it actually um, welded the pipe is cooled and then it's uh, been heat treated okay so the heat treatment that means like the pipeline is uh, depending on how fast you cool the pipeline um, the inner metallurgy of the pipeline is being changed okay so that's we I mean uh, we call the heat treatment so uh, in that process the pipelines uh, material like uh, the it's the iron carbon steel but it had some different uh, crystal form okay like uh, ferrite mercinsite and many other crystal form so that's actually changed so <clears throat> that's what we call the hydro treating and so when we do the hydro treating uh, then it uh, can remove the weld stress otherwise the welding stress would be in there so why the, it is bad because uh, if the welding stress has not been removed uh, it will be totally um, uh, uh, I mean uh, corrosive so that means like you can actually uh, uh, this pipeline can be failed due to the corrosion pretty easily okay and after that the wheels were ultrasonically tested and the pipe is hydro tested coated stenciled and inspected okay so <clears throat> what are these things like hydro testing coding stenciled and inspected so what's happened like uh sorry uh, for instance when you actually uh, make a pipeline like uh, when you manufacture a pipeline so after that you do the heat treatment and later on when the heat treatment is done after that what we usually do we um, uh, we actually put water inside the pipeline, high pressure water we we'll actually put in there and then we actually give the pressure on the both side, okay, on this side and that side and that's how we actually make sure like the pipe can take up to some stress, okay, that's we called uh, pressure of uh, hydro test okay so uh, that's how we actually check the uh, pipe uh, how durable the pipe is okay and that's that's we call the hydro testing and we also uh, do the stencil stencil means as you can see in here there are ups and downs okay but stenciling means like it would be uniform okay so uh, what we do like the we actually put it there and so that the the thickness the whole area is same okay that we actually make sure by by removing like extra <coughs> material or something like that that's we call uh, stenciling and also we do ultrasonic and other types of inspections that means if there are any kind of fault at the joint or anything so these types of like inspection okay like I mean uh, at first we did the visual inspection and after visual inspection we use ultrasound inspection okay ultrasonic inspection or ultrasound inspection that's what we do and other different types of um, 
inspection we do and when these things are done after that we coat the pipeline this is a very important part actually you will see that later on how the coating is done so <clears throat> the pipeline has been coated uh, it could be coated by different types of material but now usually we actually coated it by these uh, a type of like a, polyethylene or epoxy we call it FB fission bonded epoxy and there are so many different types of uh, coating available and why are we actually coating uh, to um, uh, to protect it from the corrosion and the weathering effects okay so that's why we actually do the coating so this is how we do all these uh, three things okay so uh, just like the year W, there are another type, uh, we call it D-saw or double submerged arc weld. So the pipe has been, uh, uh, the pipe is welded both inside and outside in, in these types of things, okay? And uh, the, um, the an inspection of the weld follows then, the pipe is plastically deformed by a mechanical expander to achieve the target diameter okay and then we do the as usual hydrostatic NDT is the non-destructive testing so um, just like a hydro test here as I showed you in here we do other forms of uh, uh, testing we call those NDT okay for instance uh, here uh, we we can actually uh, put the pipeline a lot of stress and try to break it at a point okay so at what point pipeline can be break so uh, to uh, check what is the UTS or uh, ultimate tensile stress okay so that's what uh, that's the type actually if we uh, for the uh, testing and there are like extra inspection and uh, ultrasound inspection x-ray and uh, this actually done so for the d -saw, we usually do the x-ray inspection but in here we uh, ERW we do the ultrasonic uh, inspection okay um, and d -saw pipe use uh, uh, up to 10 inch oh sorry uh, 10 inch to up, up okay uh, furnace weld or butt weld or continuous uh, weld pipe that means uh, CW or the continuous weld pipe is used uh, uh, one eighth to uh, four and a half inch so the steel fed into the lever in the gas furnace which is heated to high temperature and then it do the forming and fusing okay and then the pipe is trained and finished hydro tested coated stenciled and inspected so the same types we do so this is about all about the uh, carbon steel piping now um, um, now let's uh, talk about another very important thing uh, that we have mentioned like this as you can see like the inches so these are the uh, how we can actually express a pipeline like I mean how big it is how small it is we actually express it through uh, the pipe sizing okay which is very very important uh, like how we actually size the pipe um, for instance uh, uh, for the uh, for the you know uh, cable the electrical uh, circuit cable uh, the electrical wiring we have different types of wiring right like uh, uh, some are like I mean transmission uh, uh, wearing some are for the distribution some for like I mean high voltage some for low voltage like that now pipeline also got like the very similar case actually okay just like the electrical transmission and distribution system we have different types of pipelines and um, that need a common universal form of the sizing so that's exactly why uh, we have developed uh, a standard okay now the carbon steel piping is described by the nominal diameter and the weight or the schedule okay so the older um, system which is called IPS or iron pipe size system uh, we had different types of uh, sizing like the standard extra strong or excess double extra strong or XXS something like that but 
uh, often these uh, systems are confusing. Uh, still, sometimes we actually use that. So it's better to know about the S, XS, XXS, something like that. But uh, in most of the cases, now we use the NPS, okay? Which is an ANSI set of standard. Uh, used for the pipeline for uh, high or low pressure and the temperature. And the European equivalent of this uh, NPS is DN or diametre nominal. Okay. So it's a uh, French. Uh, so um, this is an equivalent chart for the IPS and the uh, diameter. Okay. Uh, or, uh, uh, sorry, uh, NPS and the OD. So that means like if the NPS is 1 by 8 inch, so how much would be the outside diameter? Uh, if the NPS is 8 inch, so how much would be the outside diameter? Now this is very uh, interesting uh, as you would see uh, for instance here like uh, the, the NPS would be given in inch but the OD outer diameter is also an inch but it's a uh, it's a different number right like here you can see NPS is 14 outer diameter is 14 NPS is 36 outer diameter is 36 but here NPS is 12 but the outer diameter is 10.75 why is that so this is interesting like I mean from this size 1 by 8 inch to 12 inch pipeline NPS and the outer diameter are not same they're different we'll learn the formula how to equivalent of these things but those are different okay so the outer diameter is usually a little smaller than the uh, or like I mean a larger it depends on the type of size so it is different it's not the same okay like here you can see like the outer diameter is a little bit uh, larger but here it comes a little bit smaller than the NPS is given However, uh, NPS is or above equal or above 14 and the same as the outer diameter. And it's same for the Dimitri uh, nominal too. Okay, uh, the, it's size by the millimeter. Okay, it goes like, I mean, 350 of the 350 and 340. It's still kind of like, I mean, uh, changing, but um, uh, um, I mean, uh, the, for the sorry, uh, for the diameter uh, DN number, the formula is straight. But in case of uh, inch, like NPS, always remember, like uh, from 14 and above NPS, it remain constant. It's the NPS and outer diameter is same, but it's 12 or later is smaller okay now you can get this i mean the whole chart at this website i'll urge you to visit this site engineeringtoolbox.com and you will have the whole uh, picture and uh, it's according to uh, nc or ASME me 36 point b36.1 okay now how these uh, pipe sizes have been changed okay and what is actually nps and when we actually talk about nps then there is another thing will be coming in which is the pipe uh, schedule number okay so uh, for the NPS uh, 1 8 inch uh, to 12 inch the NPS and OD values are different and for NPS 14 to up NPS and OD value are same okay as maybe 36.1 uh, steel pipe and 36.19 for stainless steel pipe and API 5L for 9 pipe that is the standard for the pipeline for this um, pipe sizing okay and the suffix S on some schedule indicates that these are available in corrosion resistance that means it's made with stainless steel okay remember that so this is the NPS and OD calculation okay so pipe till um, 1 8 to 12 NPS is actually somewhere between the line, the nominal pipe size. Okay, so the OD is the throughout the pipe. This is ID and NPS is somewhere inside. 
But in case of uh, NPS 14 or above, the whole pipeline, and the outer diameter is the NPS. Now, we know about the NPS. So that means uh, NPS usually give us information on how the outer diameter could be, right? We can have a vague idea. But why it's a vague idea? Because without the thickness of the pipeline, we cannot actually make sure like how uh, we can define a pipeline uh, properly, okay? So, for that reason, we actually came up with a number and we call it pipeline schedule number. So the pipeline schedule number will not give you the direct thickness conversion. What it will actually give you, it's just a ratio of uh, approximately, you can calculate it with this formula, that is 1000 times P by S, where P and S both are in PSI unit, okay? P is the internal working pressure and S is the allowable stress and using this formula you can actually get this uh, I mean, this chart and from this chart okay it will give you a schedule number OD and NPS uh, schedule number and NPS through that you can actually design a pipeline how for instance um, you have NPS um, 20 and it says 40 schedule number. That means this is the size of the pipe. Okay, so the wall thickness is 0.375 inch and in millimeter 9.55, but the uh, and the diameter would be 20 inch. Okay, and for instance, it's given 10 NPS and 30 schedule. What does that supposed to mean? That means it would be the outer diameter would be 10.75 inch and the thickness would be 0 0.307. Okay, so you can get the whole uh, list in this. Uh, okay, so you can actually go to this side and uh, get the whole table uh, for that. Okay, so that's how we actually uh, make the conversion. So, uh, I guess you can now, uh, if I actually tell you that, um, define a pipeline, I mean, tell me what is the diameter and the thickness of the pipeline of NPS 14 and uh, uh, schedule number 40. So, what would be that? NPS 14, the pipelines diameter, then we'll go to this chart and we'll find NPS 14 here. That means the diameter would be 14, okay, in inch and in millimeter 355.6. And schedule number 40, that means the thickness would be this 0.375 or 9.525 millimeter, okay? I guess it is clear. So we'll actually uh, commit that we, we will use this a lot so you won't forget anything. <laughs> So, um, we're actually talking about the piping materials, remember? So, we have talked about quite a bit about the um, uh, cast iron, okay? And we'll come back again later on. Uh, but let's uh, continue talking about uh, other types like the stainless steel. Now, stainless steel pipe is used when superior corrosion resistance is required. So what does that supposed to mean? That means like uh, the uh, when you need a type of pipeline, when you need uh, like, I mean, I mean, totally flawless, there would be no corrosion at all. So what types of industry can we think like when uh, there would be no corrosion at all? It's uh, loud. Pharmaceuticals, food, beverage. Okay, so at those types of industries, Corrosion, pipeline corrosion could lead to contamination, okay? So that's exactly why we use uh, for this food industry, beverage industry, pharmaceutical industry, uh, we use uh, stainless steel pipeline. 
So most of the stainless steel piping is a kind of like austenitic variety with a 15 to 18% chromium to 10% nickel and the most common grade for stainless steel pipe are SAE 304 and 316 okay so these are the types of the stainless steel we usually use to design uh, small or pilot plants okay um, the stainless steel piping is used in this food beverage and pharmaceutical industry why because the iron dissolution cannot be tolerated in these industries right so that's why we use this now let's go to the other types of the material it is PE or polyethylene piping okay so polyethylene or PE is a polymer thermoplastic so it has its own standard API 15 LE specification for the polyethylene line pipe now why these types of pipeline are important this is important because Polyethylene or PE got no or less corrosion at all. But the main challenge is we cannot use it for high pressure pipeline. Okay, so that's why the HDPE or high density polyethylene, we use it for low pressure natural gas distribution piping systems. Okay, so the resistance to corrosion can make it more economical choice for underground piping. But the problem is it can take less pressure, okay? And also, we cannot actually use it like, I mean, um, high, long transmission pipeline. We, we cannot use for that because it's too soft, okay? So that's exactly why uh, we just use it for the low pressure uh, natural gas distribution system, okay? So uh, this is all about the piping material we have uh, for now uh, and we have learned quite a bit about like the different types of piping materials. Now let's uh, talk about the piping components at first, okay? So what types of uh, piping components we use? Now the most of the pipeline we actually said is uh, we call it like the main pipeline, line pipe or like the pipe body, okay? now. Except for the pipe body, there are some piping components which are equally important. So what types of uh, piping components we usually use in industries as you can see in the pictures. So we use flanges, we use elbows, we use teeth, unions, reducers, cap, plunge, valve, pressure release valves or PRV, strainers and other for the instrumentation. Now, what are the flanges? As you can see this picture, these pictures, we, these are the flanges. Elbow, probably we all know where the elbows are, right? The L-shaped bows, T's, this T-shape uh, joints, okay? Uh, unions, reducers, we'll actually uh, see the pictures more, like, I mean, what are the reducers, what are the unions, what are the caps, plugs? So, uh, let's uh, go inside and let's... Uh, so um, for the piping component, the pipe fittings, uh, Brunel TS and uh, corresponding the ASTM standards, these are actually given. So for the piping components, we have a wide blue of varieties of the grades. Okay, so uh, it depends on the types of the material used. It depends on the pipe also because it should be compatible like the fitting and the pipe should be compatible if not then we can have some electrochemical reaction with the pipes and the fittings so that would be awful and um, these are the things so um, for instance the carbon steel or carbon alloy steel with high temperature carbon alloy steel with low temperature or the austenitic steel they have different types for the pipeline fittings and flanges uh, for valves, for bolts and not. So we have this, this is the matrix, like what types of um, standard we should actually follow. It could be confusing, so that's why this standard is very, very, I mean, this matrix is very, very important. Why? Uh, for instance, uh, you, your, your supervisor 
uh, your your pipeline engineer or a technician and your supervisor told you like hey uh, bob we have to design a a, a pipeline a pipeline system uh, so uh, for the for the carbon steel of uh, grade uh, a106 so can you find like what types of uh, standards we need for the fittings like for the flange and valves so where you will search you can just go to this matrix and say like okay so carbon steel and the main piping material is a106 so that means we have to find the stm a105 that standard and the, for the valves it will follow a216 okay and for the fittings it will follow a234 and for bolts and nuts of this style so that's exactly why this matrix is uh, important okay so you can actually uh, get to this side and get the more information about this matrix right so uh, for the STM standards uh, as we have discussed at the, I mean we have wrote in here we'll just uh, uh, we'll just discuss a little bit about that so that you have some idea like the, for the fittings here, a234 okay so the specification covers the wrought carbon steel and alloys fittings for the seamless and welded construction a403 for the uh, specification for oh sorry this is uh, uh, double lining I'll just uh, delete one uh, standard specification for rot and austenitic uh, stainless steel pipe feeding flanges uh, a105 okay a182 and a315 uh, like uh, for different purpose we have different types for instance a1h2 we uh, use it for like the parts for high temperature service but in case of 350 we use it for low temperature service so please go through all these uh, things and please try to remember this is uh, for valves uh, exactly like the fittings we have different uh, STM standards like a216 217 uh, 352 and 182 so these are the uh, specifications like for this purpose we use this one for instance if it covers the carbon steel for valves flanges fittings or other pressure containing part for the high temperature service so we have to use the a216 but for others high temperature and corrosive service we should use a217 for low temperature is a352 and etc for bolts and nuts, uh, we have like this uh, A 193. Now, as the equivalent with the uh, ASTM standards, we have the ASME or ANSI and APA standards too. Uh, for instance, ANSI or uh, ASME B 16.1 for the cast iron and pipe planes, uh, 16.5 pipe flanges and fittings. 2 NPS half to 24 and CB 16.34 for valves, flange threaded and welding ends uh, and C or SB 16.2 with the metallic non-metallic gaskets for the pipelines uh, B 16.36 for the RFS flanges or API 6A for the wellheads and Christmas tree equipments and API 17D for such C uh, purposes so these are some examples actually for the types of standards uh, we use for different types of uh, different purposes okay now um, let's uh, talk about like uh, individual piping components okay which is very important one of the most important uh, piping component are the flanges here okay the flanges got different types of rating should be uh, the ratings should be uh, equivalent to the uh, main pipeline however we have these uh, um, uh, ratings and we'll actually uh, talk about it shortly so what are the flanges flanges uh, are a connect okay so it connect the pipe with various equipments for instance the most commonly used uh, flanges conform to the requirement of ASME or NC 16.5 B 16.5 so I have uploaded the resources so you can actually find the resource section about the flanges 
flanges are not recommended for underground pipeline. Why? Because for the main pipeline, we can use um, coating, but for the underground pipeline, it should be tough to use the coating. We still can do that, but this is very uh, tiresome process, especially for the uh, long underground transmission pipeline, we don't use flanges at all, okay? So flanges are not recommended for that purpose uh, to, to contact with soil or open possibilities for the corrosion. Now, also remember flanges are the most common source for leakage. So any kind of spilling, leakage or anything happens, that's through the flanges because sometimes we do not choose the right flange for the right purpose. And that's exactly why this flange rating is important to uh, know like what types of flange you should use and what types of operation, okay? So the pressure rating is, um, uh, pressure rating for the flange, we also call it the flange rating, is the flange rating or the pressure rating, it is defined as the maximum allowable pressure or MAOP that a flange can withstand at increasing temperature, okay? That means if I increase the temperature, the maximum allowable pressure or stress that a flange can withstand. So according to ANSI or SVB 16.5 specification, there are seven flange pressure rating like 150, 300, 400, 2, 2,500, okay? So these are the flange rating. We have 6, okay? 6 in here. Total 7, but we have actually 6 is are showing in here. The 4 is not, 4 is not given in this picture. Anyways, so... How actually we calculate the readings and how it actually works. Okay, so the allowable pressure for a given class uh, material and the temperature dependent. Okay, that means it depends on what type of material you're using for the flame on and the temperature also. For instance, a class 50 flange, okay, 150. So you can see from the number actually, like for the, just a quick estimation, 150, that means it's thinner. It got less material in here. That means it will withstand with less uh, allowable pressure and less temperature. But for 2500, it got way more, right? So this is the thing. So let's see. A class 150 flange is rated to 270 psig that means gauge pressure g, g means gauge pressure okay so that means pound per square inch gauge at ambient condition okay now the same flange at 400 degree fahrenheit it can withstand at 180 psi why because if the more temperature increase, so the property of the material will fall, so it can withstand with less. And if it goes to 700 PS, uh, sorry, 650, uh, 600 uh, Fahrenheit, it can withstand only at uh, 150, okay? and 75 psig at 800 degree fahrenheit that means when the pressure goes down the temperature goes up or vice versa that totally makes sense why if the temperature is up then what happened to the material the material will get weakened okay so material can fail quickly and that's exactly why at high temperature the allowable stress would be lower for the material and that actually explained the flange okay so 150 that means 150 pound okay or the number is 150 or class 150 wherever you actually say in which way 
it is the class okay you can say like class 150 150 number 150 pound okay so whatever is there it all means the same now let's come with another example a class 300 flange number okay or 300 number it can handle more pressure than 150 flange that's for sure because a class 300 flange are constructed with more metal it's more thick and it can withstand with more pressure okay so the pressure class at the cast iron flanges you would found at ncb 16.1 okay and for others at ncb 16.5 all right now what types of flanges actually we have this is the joint type like the flange types by facing remember there are many other types of flanges but this is the facing type what types of face we have okay we got flat face we got raised face we got ring joint face okay here we got tongue and groove this is like tongue and groove we get male female probably when if you were familiar with the electrical um circuit panels then probably you were uh, uh uh, familiar with the male and female connectors so these are like the same thing for the pipelines uh, threaded pipes of the smooth face we have different types of uh, okay so I'm not going to the definition or like the advantage disadvantage but please go with this this is uh, very very important okay now these are the attachment types like the pipes to attach the flames okay so what are these attachment types we have a threaded flange okay so this is the threaded flange and it's a kind of like one of the most uh, common uh, you can see and if you look at closely then you can see the number is also given this is a 150 pound number right so 3 inch and 150 pressure class of the threaded flange the socket welded flange okay this is a socket welded flange as you can see there the, we can weld it not like uh, th there is no thread uh, slip on flange okay so this is the slip on flange uh, lapped flange this is the lap joint flange okay uh, this is the uh, weld neck flange this is the welded neck flange and the blind flange blind flange is used to stop a flow or like I mean uh, it's a terminating the flow or like stopping the things. Uh, <clears throat> so these are like the different types of flanges we have. Now these uh, according to these flange types, these AP, uh, we can actually now see like what are the um, uh, API specs for the flange. Uh, API specs for the flanges. I mean most in most uh, oil and gas industry, especially the oil field. Okay, um, at the oil field, the API flanges are used in there where the pressure can be very, very high. Now, if the pressure goes up to like, I mean, 10,000 to 20,000 PSI, these ASME flanges could not be supported. Okay, so that's uh, this flange reading could not be supported because these are for uh, pretty, it can withstand with pretty high pressure, but um, we're actually talking about very high okay like 20,000 psi is uh, massive it's huge okay so in that case um, API uh, actually developed the standards of different flanges okay so one of the standard is API 6a uh, and you can see um, uh, the types cascading and what is the pressure rating it can take uh, up to 10,000 for the R gas gate for RX gas gate we can take it to 15,000 psi okay and if it's the weld neck uh, PX octagonal gas cating, we can use up to 20,000 okay so these uh, like uh, again uh, like 17d so this is the API flange types actually we have um, flange rating calculation remember we actually we are talking about um, how we can actually calculate the flange rating like I mean there's uh, different types of flange ratings like uh, 150, 200, uh, sorry uh, 300, 600 so 
how we can calculate like I mean uh, at, uh, this is the rating and how we can calculate the maximum allowable pressure it can withstand too we can actually use a simple formula with the uh, relation with the temperature and that's how we can um, calculate the pressure now the formula is PT or the working pressure related in bar remember that unit is very very important for class 150 shall not exceed the value at temperature T okay so that's exactly why this is less or equal to this sign it's for that it's not equal to it's less or equal to remember that so uh, if the pressure is in bar okay and the temperature expressed in degree Celsius then we have these two constants for C2 would be 21.41 and C3 is 0 0.035 so we'll just plug in this information in here and if we give that temperature we'll get the pressure rating okay this is the case now uh, the value of T in this equ equation shall not exceed to what 1000 degree Fahrenheit or 538 degree Celsius for the value of T less than 38 degree Celsius we use T equal to as 38 degree okay so if the temperature is given like for instance 25 degree Celsius so we'll use the same as the 38 now uh, if the temperature is given as Fahrenheit then we'll use C2 value 320 and C3 value 0.3 okay and the pressure would be in PSI unit so for the more ratings like uh, for the rating class 300 to higher you can actually watch the section A 2.1 at ASME 16.5 okay so uh, let's do a quick calculation um, um, uh, calculate the rated working pressure for a class 150 flange according to ASME me 16.5 so the given temperature is 1000 degree Fahrenheit C2 for 1000 degree Fahrenheit would be 320 and C3 would be 0.3 and the material temperature would be in Fahrenheit scale so PT less or equal to this formula we'll use that and we got less or equal to 20 psi for this temperature okay so you gotta actually check your um, uh, calculation using this website and this is a very interesting website too so for instance you can just I mean quickly calculate uh, how you can uh, uh, the temp so you can actually give the temperature for instance thousand degree Fahrenheit uh, class 150 and then you can see the working pressure you see is 20 psi right now for 300 86 psi for 2500 718 psi at the same temperature okay pretty impressive right we don't need to use the formulas and stuff we can just put our our this uh, information and we can actually get the uh, get the value so so this is all about today's lecture so hopefully uh, you have learned about uh, the what a bit about the pipeline how we actually size design about the main pipeline and also to the um, components okay so if you have any question as usual you can actually post it at the frequently asked question section at the Moodle or you can uh, actually ask me at the next uh, Q&A uh, session, right? So, wish you have a good uh, day and uh, best wishes and uh, um, have a good day. Bye. See you later.